Yes, g'day everyone. What a pleasure it is to be here. And uh, hopefully I can provoke you unto uh, righteousness today. So, like Pastor Simon said, I'm going to be talking on Paul and Silas. And I've na- labelled my talk, uh, Rock in a Hard Place. And what we're going to do is go through how Paul and Silas were a rock in a bad situation. So it starts off the story in Acts chapter 16, and this is where it starts to really heat up in the story. And we'll pick it up in, in verse 22. It says, The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrate ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So as you can imagine, at that time, there was a crowd brewing up against Paul and Silas, and the authorities had to make a quick decision and obviously decided to, uh, to get Paul and Silas flogged and, and severely beaten. So I want you to think about how, how would have Paul and Silas felt at that time? They would have been definitely frustrated, annoyed, felt hard done by, and that injustice you know, was occurring. And they had the right to feel like that, and uh, in the natural, of course. So they would have been very frustrated in what was going on and, and really hard done by. So Paul and Silas actually in prison. And we'll continue on the story in verse 25. It says, And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. So while they were in a really hard situation, this is how they reacted. They were praying, and they were singing hymns and praises to God. But the thing is, the others were listening to to them, and they they were being a testimony in this time. In verse 26, it says, Suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains became loose. So this was an amazing, miraculous thing that happened and occurred at that time. So they were praying and singing hymns and praising to God. And then all of a sudden, an earthquake and the foundations were shaken and all the the chains fell off, which they were securely Uh, put into stocks at the center of the the prison there. And the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. So to sort of understand the concept back then, if you were a Roman and this was on your watch, the reality is you would have been killed. But the worst thing is probably your family may have been disgraced or at worst killed as well. So he felt in his heart that he had to kill himself uh, to make it okay for not, not just his family as well. But as we know, Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas and basically said, what do I have to be do to, to, to be saved? And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household Then they spoke the word of the Lord. And as we know, Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord, it's summed up very small there, but we know that is receiving the Holy Spirit, the salvation message, and obviously the evidence of speaking in tongues. And so he he continues on. They spoke the word of the Lord to, to him and to all the others in his house. And at that hour, the night of the jailer took them and washed their wounds then immediately he, he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. So what I want you to do is just to stop, think, and reflect on that story. Say la. I love that. Say la. To stop and reflect. You know, it's a great story and why it's so fundamental and on how they reacted in such a, a hard time because all the fruits of the Spirit were displayed in this story. You know, if you stop and you think and you, you go read back over the story, you see all the fruits evident. And Galatians, as we know, Paul writes to the letter to the Galatian church and this is him talking out of experience, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of the presence of, of his presence within us. You know, and that's really obvious 
how Paul and Silas reacted considering their circumstances. His, his love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, and this is what I love, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. And it's so important, and you'll see why. Kindness, goodness, faithful, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law. You know, love, it seeks the best in people. Love is not based on emotions or feelings. It is the commitment to the well-being of others without conditions or expectations. Love one another as I have loved you. This is obviously Jesus speaking. Joy, a gladness not based on circumstances. You know, it's not like you've just won the lottery and that's, that means you're happy. No, it's not based on circumstances, not based on things going wrong. Joy is more than just happiness. It's understanding who you are in Christ and being active in his works. And as a result, joy just comes from it. Peace. Peace is a state of assurance, a lack of fear and a sense of contentment. It's freedom from worry, disturbance and oppressive thoughts. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give, give I unto you. You know, let not your hearts be troubled. Long suffering, which is patience. Again, not the fact of waiting, but how we act while waiting. You know, it's the ability to bear pain or problems without complaining or needing justice for wrongs being done to you. God is just, and we need to forgive. You know, you look at the story of Paul and Silas, all these things were evident in this story. You know, they forgave the jailer. The jailer would have been one of those flogging them. And, you know, the fact is, the jailer would have, was so hurt in his heart that he dressed their wounds and cleaned them up, you know. And Paul and Silas forgave that jailer before even knowing what was going to happen. Kindness. Kindness is the eagerness to put others at ease. It is an attractive temperament that shows care. And being pure in heart, being goodness, is the selfless desire to be open-hearted and generous to others above what they deserve. And again, this was evident in this story. You know, Paul and Silas could have let the, the jailer kill himself. You know, and what would that have achieved? You know, but again, it was above what, the, what that jailer deserved. And faith... Faithfulness is firm devotion and trust in God. It's knowing that God will always make a way of escape. You know, when you look at this story, Paul had a vision to go to Macedonia, which is obviously where this was taking place in, um, in Philippi. And he knew that it, there was more to come and more was to, to be offered. And he knew that God is true to his promises. Meekness. And I love this one. Gentleness or meekness is humble, is a humble, non-threatening demeanor that derives from a position of strength and authority. You know, it's not being lowly in the sense of being weak. Meekness is actually coming from a, a position of strength and authority by the infilling of the Holy Spirit, knowing where you stand in Christ. Temperance, which is self-control, to restrain our own emotions, actions and desires and to be in harmony with God. Self-control is doing the will of God, not the will of your own. And as we know, Paul and Silas showed a lot of self-control that they could have escaped when all the shackles were released, but they didn't. Now, what's important is from what, how they reacted in their circumstances, the jailer was able to know God. Not only was the jailer able to know God, but his family, his household. And the thing is, not only that, was the, peop the other people who were in jail also listened and saw that miraculous thing happen. We don't even know that part of the story, but they could have known God from it. Not only that, we don't know who the jailer and his family ended up um, um, preaching to. You know, so you can see the importance of how you react in a situation uh, can be so fundamental. So what I want to provoke to you today, to poke you, uh, to are you displaying your fruits in your situation? Whether it be good or whether it be bad, 
You know, we might be going through a bit of a hard time at this point in time. You may have lost your job. You know, who knows? You might have financial difficulties. You might need a, a healing. All those things don't really matter if you are close to the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are a byproduct of your closeness. The way you act in a situation can help others to be saved. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Know that he is in you and with you in all things and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Thanks very much. Can you see God's vision?